Hey y'all. So let's talk about Rahab for just a little bit today. We know that of course Rahab was not an Israelite. And yet somehow in some God way, <laughs> she, she is in the lineage of Jesus. And so no longer is she just a prostitute, <laughs> but she is in the lineage of Jesus. So looking at Rahab, we know that God gave the Israelites Canaan land. And so when Moses died and Joshua assumed leadership, then they began progressing towards Canaan. And of course, Jericho was, we'll say, in the way. <laughs> um, a city that God was giving to the Israelites. And Rahab tells the spies, we know we don't stand a chance. <laughs> Everybody in this city is terrified because we have heard the stories. Now, we've got to talk about the goodness of God, the acts of his miraculous power, his faithfulness to his word, and um, where we don't wrestle necessarily, not necessarily at all, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, and darkness. Um, in the same way that it filled these people with terror when they heard what God did for Israel against their enemies, when we talk about his goodness and his faithfulness and his fulfilling his word, it encourages those who are not of like faith of what he can do and will do and wants to do. And so Rahab tells the spies, she says, I know that the Lord has given you the land and you, that your terror is fallen upon us and all that inhabit the land are faint because of you. For we have heard, we have heard what he did for you. How he dried up the water when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the east side of the Jordan, who you utterly destroyed. Like we know that Jericho is next. And it says, when we heard it, our hearts melted, neither did spirit or courage remain any more in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. So these people who are not God's people, this woman who has no I'd say sense of morality, but you know, did Judah have sense of morality? I'm still trying to understand. You know, I suppose the law is a lot different. Um, but this woman who 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 can see covenant relationships. She can see how God takes care of his people and that he was going to see to it that his word was fulfilled concerning the promises of, of the land that he gave them. And so she saw a way to, um, you know, <laughs> become part of the gang, right? <laughs> to save herself and her family. And it says, again, I thought that was really interesting in Joshua 6, that even to this day, so Joshua saved Rahab with her household and her father's household, and she lives in Israel even to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Because she knew that God was going to take care of his people. And, you know, and God told Abraham in Genesis that he said, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. And so when Rahab found the opportunity to bless God's people and to protect God's people and to do right by his people, then he in return blessed her. And so not only did she save her family and did she save herself, but she became part of 
the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Another woman with a, a, a questionable, rocky, spotted, striped, you know, whatever, a hard past, like Tamar, who lost two husbands and then was rejected by her father-in-law, a man who was supposed to be upright but chose to be unrighteous, and a woman who saw that the God of Israel took care of his people and that he blessed those that blesses his people and he curses those who curse his people. And because of both of those women stepping out and acting, they were in the lineage of the Messiah. And we'll pick up for tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.